One of the earliest characters that grabbed the Elden Ring community's attention was a large wolf man who looked a whole lot like Guts from the manga series Berserk, one of Miyazaki's favorites. His design was striking, something we hadn't quite seen before in the Soulsborne universe, and there was wild speculation over whether he would be friend or foe. I was pleasantly surprised to find out that not only was he a friend, but he had an important part to play in the overall story of the major character. Today we're going to dive into the story of Blythe, the half-wolf, shadow of Ronnie the Witch, and learn what we can about his life before and after meeting our Tarnished. The story of Blythe the half-wolf starts long before our Tarnished comes to the lands between, back when Ronnie the Witch was first selected by her two fingers to be an Empyrean, a future vessel for the Elden Ring. Upon her appointment she was given Blythe, a half-wolf warrior who would act as her shadow and eternal protector. Interestingly, this draws a parallel to both her mother and father, as well as Merica and Maliketh. Merica had Maliketh appointed as her guardian and half-brother, while Radagon left Renala with his red wolf to protect her from those who would cause her harm. There may be something to be said here for the importance of wolves and guardians to the lands between, but that would be better explored in another video. An important note before moving forward. Blythe's loyalty wholly and entirely belongs to Ronnie. However, he is an attendant created by the Two Fingers. It is not known what Blythe was doing during the Night of Black Knives. However, he states on multiple occasions that he serves Ronnie and has every intention of helping her escape the fate bestowed upon her as an Empyrean. His only wish is for her to be free, and he will do what he must to make this a reality. We can learn a little more about Blythe through his armor set, which can be obtained at the end of his questline. His armor tells us, the pelt serves as a cape, protecting from cold. Blythe was the blade of Ronnie, but the cold bothered him anyway. The Royal Greatsword informs us that, in defiance of the fate he was born to, Blythe swore to serve no master but Ronnie. As proof, the sword was imbued with a cold magic at the moment the oath was sworn. From this, we know that Blythe both defies his own fate by supporting Ronnie's quest to change hers, and that even though the cold is uncomfortable for him, he carries around a sword of cold everywhere he goes to prove his dedication to his master. His gauntlets and greaves also make mention of his willingness to defy fate for Rani, further proving there can be no question to his loyalty or dedication to her. We first meet Blythe after hearing his howl while exploring the Mistwood. After hearing this, we're able to ask Kale, the first merchant we encounter, what's making the noise, and he will tell us of Blythe's whereabouts and teach us the finger snap gesture, which can be used to call him over to us. Upon our first meeting, Blythe seems uninterested in our tarnished, mentioning Darawil, a man he considers a traitor, and wants to know if we hear anything about his whereabouts. It's likely that Darawil previously served Ronnie, as the Bloodhound Knights do not seem to serve a single faction. Their armor explains, without the use of language, each knight chooses his own master. Once the decision has been made, the knight stays loyal for life. At some point, Darawil betrayed his allegiance to Rani, and somehow found himself locked in a never jail. Once we find his prison, we're able to summon Blythe to help us in this fight. Upon doing so, he says, Darawil, rotting in a cell is no true justice. No, this is where it ends for you. Upon Darawil's defeat, Blythe warms up to our Tarnished a bit, giving us a somber smithing stone, and telling us about his friend, E.G., suggesting we tell him that Blythe sent us, which will unlock the Carrion Filigree Crest in his shop. We encounter Blythe again after following Ronnie's questline. She suggests we meet the others working under her direction, one of which is Blythe. This time around, he's much more friendly with us, even saying he is glad to have you in the service of Mistress Ronnie. He informs us that he is in Limgrave, looking for the way to Nokrin, as there is something important to Rani there. We can meet him again in the underground, where he begins calling us mate, and informs us that he has found no path into Nokrin. This is also the first time we get the impression that he's not a fan of Celibus, referring to him as a spiteful little rat. He even jokes about showing him how sharp his teeth are, and immediately laughing about how he'd not be so brutal. In this moment, we start to see Blythe's dignity as a knight. After learning of Star Scourge Radon's connection to the city of Nokrin, we can tell Blythe what we have learned. 
He then tells us he will meet us in Caled, and that we will fight sword and fang as compatriots on the battlefield. Upon arriving in Castle Redmain, Blythe's affection for our tarnished is further shown through his concern, asking that we don't go dying on him for Ronnie's sake. At this point, it's clear Blythe sees us as a partner in service to Ronnie, perhaps even an equal. After defeating Radon, Blythe ruminates on Radon's strength in holding back the stars and asks that we meet where the star fell so that we can fight side by side for Ronnie's fate. Sword and Fang. This is where things take a turn for the tragic. Blythe leaves us a message telling us that a traitor has been taken care of and that he'll meet us in Nokrin, but he never does. At this point we can speak with E.G. and he will inform us of Blythe's background, how he was given to Ronnie by the Two Fingers, and that should Ronnie succeed in her ambitions of breaking free of the Two Fingers, Blythe will have no control over his own actions and become a curse destined to destroy her. Instead of explaining this to Blythe, E.G. traps him in the same Everjail which housed the traitorous Darawil. Should we return to this Everjail, we have a choice. Either leave Blythe within, or free him. Should we keep him locked away, we are subjected to a heartbreaking howl from our friend, and should we set him free, Blythe thanks us, saying he's leaving to check on Ronnie and make sure she's safe. Blythe is excited to see Ronnie's ambitions put into motion. Having no way of knowing, her success will break him. We do not see Blythe again until we complete Ronnie's questline, but there is an important misconception to clear up before we dive into that. When helping Ronnie through Nuxtella, Waterfall Basin, you find the Baleful Shadow. This is an assassin of the Two Fingers, sent to track down and kill Ronnie in order to put a stop to her plan to escape the fate that they have chosen for her. This Baleful Shadow looks and fights exactly like Blythe. Some in the Elden Ring lore community are under the impression that this Baleful Shadow is Blythe being controlled by the Two Fingers, but this is not the case. It's possible to find a piece of armor on the wall behind Celebus's Rise. Its description reads, A mask fashioned after the head of a black wolf, relic of an assassin who assumed the guise of Ronnie the Witch's loyal shadow. The likeness is striking. This mask is an exact likeness of Blythe, and we now know it was used by an assassin. After defeating the Baleful Shadow, Ronnie asks us to tell E.G. and Blythe that she loves them. With these two things in mind, it is all but confirmed that the Baleful Shadow we defeat is not Blythe, but an assassin's scent, matching his appearance in an attempt to catch Ronnie unaware. After following Ronnie's quest to its end and helping her achieve her goal, we can encounter Blythe one more time. Our friend, Blythe the Half-Wolf, can be found outside of Ronnie's Rise, surrounded by dead Black Hand assassins, likely sent in an attempt to kill his mistress. After this battle, Blythe kneels on the ground, clearly struggling, saying he is part of her very being and could never betray her, before letting out a howl and swinging at our tarnished. In this moment, Blythe is broken and has lost all control of his own will. There is nothing left for our tarnished to do but put an end to our friend. More often than not, in true FromSoft fashion, the NPCs we meet are destined for tragic endings. Blythe was a knight who served his lady to his last breath, and a loyal companion to our tarnished throughout our time in the Lands Between. Few things were as heartbreaking for me while playing Elden Ring as seeing him lose control despite his valiant effort to fight both his and Ronnie's fates. I can't help but wonder if there were another way for Blythe's story to end. Perhaps Mikola's needle could have severed his ties to the Two Fingers, as it's said to ward away the meddling of outer gods. Or if only E.G. had been honest with Blythe about his fate, he could have instead chosen to become Spirit Ash, following us through the rest of our journey and staying in service to his lady through our actions. Let us know how you think Blythe's story should have ended in the comments. Please like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you can stay updated on our next dive into Elden Lore.